understanding the basic concepts of crystal structures as part of engineering materials will be playing an important role for the design of engineers in their different fields of endeavor. In crystallography, crystal structure is a description of the ordered arrangement of atoms, ions, or molecules in a crystalline material. Crystallography is the experimental science of determining the arrangement of atoms in crystalline solids. For this example, in this slide, you could see strontium titanate. The atoms or the molecules are orderly arranged makes it a crystal. An atom is the smallest constituent of ordinary matter that has the properties of a chemical element. Every solid, liquid, gas including plasma is composed of neutral or ionized atoms. From the picture, this is an illustration of a helium atom that depicts the nucleus in pink and the electron cloud distribution in black. An ion is an atom or molecule that has a non-zero net electrical charge. It means its total number of electrons is not equal to its total number of protons. If the number of electrons exceeds the total number of protons, the atom or molecule has a negative charge. Otherwise, the atom or molecule is positively charged. A cation is a positively charged ion, while an anion is a negatively charged atom. A molecule is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. A crystal or crystalline solid is a solid material whose constituents such as atoms, molecules, or the ions are arranged in a highly ordered microscopic structure, forming a crystal lattice that extends in all directions. Ordered structures occur from the intrinsic nature of the constituent particles to form symmetric patterns that repeat along the principal directions of three-dimensional space in matter. As a review, a crystal is any solid material in which the component atoms are always arranged in a definite pattern that is highly ordered and whose surface regularity reflects its internal symmetry. The smallest group of particles in the material that constitute the repeating pattern is the unit cell of the structure. The unit cell completely defines the symmetry and structure of the entire crystal lattice, which is built up by repetitive translation of the unit cell along its principal axis. The repeating patterns are said to be located at the points of the Bravais lattice. Let us try to define some terms. Crystalline lattice, this will be the regular arrangement of atoms within a crystalline solid. Particles combine to minimize their energy. A unit cell will be the smallest divisible unit of a crystal that when repeated in three dimensions reproduces the entire crystal lattice. If this will be the entire crystal lattice and then we try to divide them to its smallest unit, the square is the unit cell. And from the unit cell, this will be repeated wherein the arrangement are in highly ordered form forming the crystal lattice. For the unit cells we look at, each atom in any one structure is identical to the other atoms in that structure. Different colors are meant to aid visualization. 
The coordination number is the number of atoms with each atom is in direct contact. In other words, this will be the number of atoms that is keeping in touch or adjacent to a certain atom, molecule, or molecule in a crystal lattice. The number of atoms with which a given atom can strongly interact is also known as the coordination number. The packing efficiency gives the percentage of the volume occupied by the spheres within a unit cell. In other words, if the coordination number is high, it also means that the packing efficiency must be greater. This is an illustration of a simple cubic lattice. An exaggerated view, we have eight atoms combined together or attached together by bands will be forming a simple cubic lattice. To exaggerate it further, if we make the atoms bigger so that they will be closer together, we'll be forming the simple cubic lattice. If the center of each of the spheres will be connected together and then we will consider the cube that will be made, we'll be making the simple cubic lattice as shown in this video. As it is observed, you can see that there are eight, one, eight atoms found in each corner of the cube. Since there are eight one eight atoms in each corner of the cube, it produces only one atom as a total. So let us consider the simple cubic lattice. The simple cubic unit cell has one atom at each corner. The atom touch along each edge. If we will consider the side of the cube, L, and then considering the figure, we could see that there is one eight atom at each corner. If there is one eight atom at each corner, we could see that L is equal to 2R. As a summary, since there are eight one eight atoms at each corner, we could say that in the simple cubic unit cell, it only has one atom because we multiply eight to one eight atoms gives only one atom. If we will consider one atom and then count the number of atoms that is in direct contact with this particular atom that we had considered. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there are 6 atoms that is in direct contact with one atom in the crystal lattice. This number is the coordination number that is equivalent to 6. Analyzing further, if we try to analyze it again and consider each side to be L and L is equal to 2R, we could see that there are 8 one eight atom at each corner, making a total of one atom that occupies a simple cubic unit cell. The packing efficiency is 52%. As it was discussed, the packing efficiency is the percentage of the volume occupied by the sphere within the cubic. How is 52% solved? Let us consider each side to be containing two R's and each side will be L, so that L is equal to two R. The packing efficiency is the volume occupied by the atoms in the unit cell divided by the volume of the unit cell 
times 100%. To solve for the volume occupied by the atoms in the unit cell, one eighth atom will be multiplied by the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We multiply 8 because there are 8 one eight atoms in each corner of the cube. Divide it by the total volume of the cube. The total volume of the cube or the unit cell is L cube. And we multiply it by 100%. Since we have learned that L is equal to 2R, we will write L as a function of R, making it the whole quantity 2R cube in the denominator. Simplifying this and computing it, we get here 52.36%, rounding it off, makes the packing efficiency 52%. The next unit cell will be the body-centered cubic lattice. The body-centered cubic lattice will be illustrated in this video wherein we could see that there is one whole atom in the center of the cube. In the center of the cube, there is one atom, and in each corner, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight atoms. Exaggerating it further, wherein the atoms are stick together, there is still one whole atom in the center. If we connect the centers of the eight atoms found in the corner, we will now be considering the body-centered cubic lattice. There is one atom in the center and eight one-eight atoms in each corner, making a total of two atoms found for every body-centered cubic lattice inside the cell. The body-centered cubic unit cell has one atom in the center and one at each corner. Atoms touch along a diagonal through the center of the cube, not along the edge. Looking at the cube, each side of the cube will be named L, and then each side or the face of the cube will be having a diagonal, and we call it B. C is the diagonal of the cube by connecting two opposite corners of the cube. The triangle LBC forms a right triangle. And applying the Pythagorean theorem, we see that C squared is equal to B squared plus L squared. If we analyze C, C contains or is equivalent to 4R. And if we analyze one side of the cube from Pythagorean theorem, B squared is equal to L squared plus L squared. So therefore, B squared will be equivalent to 2 L squared. Substituting the value of C and the value of B squared into the main equation, which is C squared is equal to B squared plus L squared, we get here the quantity 4R squared is equal to 2L squared plus L squared. Simplifying further, we get here L squared is equal to the quantity of 4R squared all over 3. Therefore, we can get a relationship L as a function of R for a body-centered cubic unit cell, wherein R, wherein L is equivalent to 4R over square root of 3. The coordination number for a body-centered cubic unit cell is 8. As a review, if one atom is considered in the crystal lattice for a body-centered cubic unit cell, there are 8 atoms that is in directly contact to one atom. And analyzing it again, at each corner there are 8 one eight atoms and in the center we have a one whole atom making it a total of two atoms for every body centered cubic unit cell. The packing efficiency of a body centered cubic unit cell is 68%. 
68% could be solved following the procedure or the algorithm when we solved 52% as the packing efficiency of a simple cubic unit lattice. I believe you can solve 68% and I will be leaving that up to you. The third is the face-centered cubic unit lattice. Let my secretary explain it to you. The face-centered cubic lattice contains the same eight vertex atoms as in the simple cubic and body-centered cubic lattices, but also contains six atoms located in the six faces of the cell. In a space-filling model of the face-centered cubic unit cell, the atoms touch along the side diagonal of the cell. Each face atom touches the four vertex atoms that define the face of the cell. The unit cell of the face-centered cubic cell is shown here. The unit cell contains the same eight vertex atoms as a simple cubic and body-centered cubic structures, each one-eighth inside the cell. The six face atoms each lie one half inside the cell. When combined with the vertex atoms, this gives the equivalent of four atoms inside the cell. The face centered cubic unit cell has one atom at each corner and one atom in the center of each face. Atoms touch along the diagonal face. If we analyze it independently for each side, for each diagonal, we will be getting here L as a function of R wherein we get L is equal to 2 times the square root of 2R for a face-centered cubic unit cell. The coordination number for a face-centered cubic unit cell is 12. The packing efficiency is 74%. I will give it as your duty how 74% became the packing efficiency for a face-centered cubic unit cell. Let us solve a problem relating to crystal structure when it comes to the density of a certain element. Chromium crystallizes with a body-centered cubic unit cell. The radius of a chromium atom is 125 picometer. Calculate the density of solid crystalline chromium in grams per cubic centimeter. The radius of chromium is 125 picometer and we have to convert that in centimeters. 1 picometer is 1 times 10 raised to negative 12 meter and 1 centimeter is 1 times 10 raised to negative 2 meter. Converting, we get here 1.25 times 10 raised to negative, negative 8 centimeter for the radius of chromium. For a body-centered cubic unit cell, we were able to derive it that L is equal to 4R over the square root of 3. For the volume, the volume is equivalent to L cubed. And L is equal to 4R all over square root of 3. If we substitute the radius equivalent to 1.25 times 10 raised to negative 8 of a centimeter, we get the volume to be 2.4056 times 10 raised to negative 23 cubic centimeters. To solve for the mass, for a body-centered cubic unit cell, there are two atoms. So two atoms will be the basis. Since there are two atoms in the unit cell, and we know that one mole of chromium is equivalent to 6.023 times 10 raised to 23 atoms, as defined by Avogadro, and from the periodic table, we know that one mole of chromium is 51.996 grams, or simply 52 grams. Now we can solve the mass. 
the mass is 1.72687 times 10 raised to negative 22 grams. For the density, we will represent that with the Greek alphabet rho. Rho is equivalent to m over v. m is the mass and v is the volume. We substitute now the solved mass and the solved volume. Substituting, we get 1.72687 times 10 raised to negative 22 grams divided by the volume which is 2.4056 times 10 raised to negative 23 cubic centimeter. From here, we now can solve the density of chromium, which is 7.18 grams per cubic centimeter. Why did we consider three significant figures? From the problem, we could see that the only given number is 125 picometer. 125 means there are three significant figures. Since it is given that 125 has three significant figures, it means our final answer must also be containing three significant figures. I introduce this to you to avoid students asking how many decimal places or whatsoever. So base your final answer from the number of significant figures given in the problem. Other types of structures will also be introduced here. We have the closest pack structures. Another way to envision crystal structures is to think of atoms stacking in layers. The simple cubic structure is one layer of atoms in a square pattern with the second layer aligned exactly on top of the atoms beneath. It has a lot of empty space. For closest pack structure, more efficient packing is achieved by offsetting the second layer by one half atom so that the atoms sit in the indentions formed by the atoms in layer below. Another is the hexagonal closest packing. Third layer is aligned with the first layer. We have the ABAB pattern. The coordination number is 12. Packing efficiency is 74% and unit cell is hexagonal. That is why it's hexagonal closest packing. For hexagonal closest packing, we have angles of 60 degrees and 120 degrees within the unit cell. Another is the cubic closest packing. The third layer is offset from the first layer. It follows the ABC ABC pattern. The coordination number is 12. Packing efficiency is 74%. It is quite identical to the face-centered cubic unit cell structure. What is packing fraction? It defines how dense or closely pack the atoms in a lattice area. The volume of an atom, we will consider it as a sphere. The volume is 4 over 3 pi times the cube of the radius. For atom A, we will, be, we will be using a subscript A, V sub A is equal to 4 over 3 pi Rs of A cubed. If we will consider an atom B, we use a subscript B, V sub B is equal to 4 over 3 pi times the cube of R sub B. The packing fraction is the volume occupied by the atoms divided by the volume of the cell. It is similar to the packing efficiency. But for the packing fraction, we do not have to multiply 100 to express it in percent. Instead, we express it as a decimal. The Bragg's Law When x-rays are scattered from a crystal lattice, 
peaks of scattered intensity are observed, which correspond to the following condition. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of scattering. The path length difference is equal to an integer number of wavelengths. Crystal defect is imperfection in the regular geometrical arrangement of the atoms in a crystalline solid. These imperfections result from the deformation of the solid, rapid cooling from high temperature or high energy radiation striking the solid, located at single points along lines or on whole surfaces in the solid. These defects influence its mechanical, electrical, and optical behavior. We could identify a crystal using the Weiss and the Miller indices. What is a Weiss index? The Weiss parameters introduced by Christian Samuel Weiss in 1817 are the ancestors of the Miller indices. They give an approximate indication of a phase orientation with respect to the crystallographic axis and were used as a symbol for the phase. The Miller indices are a symbolic vector representation for the orientation of an atomic plane in a crystal lattice and are defined as the reciprocals of the fractional intercept which the plane makes with the crystallographic axis. Let us have an example. Determine the Weiss and Miller index of the plane HKL. So this will be the plane HKL. That will be the X and the Y axis. And we have the Z axis to make it three-dimensional. If this will be the plane HKL, wherein the coordinates will also be given in the x-intercept is 2a, the y-intercept is at b, and the z-intercept is at 3c. And this will make the plane HKL, which we wanted to solve its corresponding Weiss and Miller index. a is actually the unit distance of scale in the x-axis, B is the unit distance of scale in the y-axis and C is the unit distance of Z in the z-axis. H is the intercept with the x-axis all over A and that will be equivalent to 2. K is the intercept with the y-axis and we divide that by B and that will be equivalent to 1. L is the intercept with the z-axis, if we divide that by c, gives 3. All this will be the y's index. If the y's index will be 2, 1, 3, which we had solved earlier, the reciprocal will be 1 half, 1 over 1, and 1 third respectively. If we clear off fraction by multiplying the greatest common factor between 2, 1, and 3, which is 6, we get 1 half times 6 is 3, 1 over 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 third times 6 is 2. We multiply the LCD or the greatest common factor and we get now the Miller indices. Each will be called the Miller index. So therefore, we could say that the Weiss index of plane HKL is 213, while the Miller index will be 362. There are other problems I'll be considering in this uh, lecture, wherein you can use them as practice problems to understand the principle better. And this will be the problems that you could solve and analyze from in material science polymorphism is the ability of a solid material to exist in more than one form or crystal structure polymorphism can potentially be found in any crystalline material 
including polymers, minerals, and metals, and is related to allotropy, which refers to chemical elements like glycine, which is able to form monoclinic and hexagonal crystals. Calcite and aragonite, both forms of calcium carbonate. So you could watch some videos that I had placed here in the lecture. You could see there the link and you could watch this in YouTube to understand more about the Weiss and Miller indices. In this
and there are also problems that are solved from the links I'll be giving you and the videos will be explaining it further for your better understanding.
Let's have a look at the. videos that could help you so this will be the end of topic four regarding crystal structures so ladies and gentlemen have a nice day